This could be the game changer. The first thing that I want to achieve on this golfing journey is really simple. It's to get better. It's to be able to stand on a tee box on any golf club in the world and feel confident that I know what I'm doing. His knowledge of the game is good. His skill is pretty decent. So I'm hoping with a bit of technique, a few bits of fine tuning, he'll be able to reach his goal. I know I'm not going to get down to scratch or anything like that, but I think there is a chance for somebody like me, who's been down at 12, who's currently at 14, with enough practice to get to single figures. Tuesday, I'm just... I wake up just completely drained. I thought I need to go and hit some balls because if I don't, I'm not going to make any, make any progress here. I need to start putting some of this in practice. And I just, I just couldn't hit anything. You know, it was just one of those frustrating sessions at, even at the driving range where everything I tried just seemed, to, just seemed to get worse. It's like Christmas. Just make sure the first one goes straight. <laughs> straight up in the air. It's a 58, I think. Nice 58, yes. This is it, this is for the Mickelson flops. We'll stick to the bump and runs first. <laughs> it never works for the Mickelson flops. And I've, I've watched another video about flops since I last saw you. <laughs> I saw you want to do now. I saw Tommy Fleet would do a flop. I was like, what? Gary ordered a 50, a 54, and a 58. Right. I've got the 50. I got the 58, which I used for the first time today, and I'm waiting for the 54. So I should be covered now in terms of my wedges. So I can't say oh, I can't do this because my clubs are 15 years old, or uh, I haven't got the right driver, or you know, or, or my irons aren't quite right fit for me. So I just decided to eliminate all those excuses, invest in it. I think it's quite important to do that. Just having the kit, I think that eliminates that excuse. So, so all you can just do is focus on your actual technique and getting better at your own game. So I'm lucky because I've balanced indoor coaching and outdoor at the moment. I have a mix of both. I've got used to doing that, um, but indoor is much more about building a golf swing and getting the technical things correct, getting them to be able to hit the same ball flight over and over. And as soon as you put them onto the golf course, you start to see they've got more fear, uh, more anxiety over shots. It's when they have sloping lies, they just don't know what to do with those things. So it's very different. <sighs> oh, that that's when you move too much in front of the ball. So if I was hitting this way, you've gone here on your backswing and you've got too much in front of the ball. That's why it's making that thick sound. When you get more behind the ball, so take the club back. When you're more there, then start your downswing. You sweep the ball, so you get that really nice connection. Today, to prepare for it, there's way more variables and way more shots that we have to cover. But happily, that's why I asked David at the start, what are you struggling with? And when he starts talking about bunkers, driving, um, hitting at the rough, I can tackle those three things, show him how to do it. He's actually luckily today got it straight away, hit some lovely shots, and his confidence comes up. So now if I don't see him for a couple of weeks, he knows how to handle those situations. This is what I brought to the golf, golf course last week. It's like this, watch this. I've been hitting them miles inside. Huh? That's gone two fairways left. <laughs> Great drive. Ooh, that's big. Good shot, that. Right, because you're confident, I'll, I'll leave it there. <laughs> I'll leave it there. One and out. So what we're going to structure it like today is first one or two holes. I just want you to play Free as play. if I'm not there. Yeah, just play as if I'm not there. I'll, I'll, I'll be bugging you and saying, what are you thinking, what are you doing? But I just need to learn how you problem solve and do things. Yeah. Your first putts are trying to gauge speed. So there's an, it's not trying to hold the putt, it's purely about speed. So you can either putt to fringes, because there's, then there's no outcome, or you can putt to holes. I would recommend putting a fairly flat putt to start. So that one there is downhill and nasty. So where that gentleman's just putted to, I would hit a few putts, and all you're trying to do is get it in a dustbin lid and get a feel for speed. So one-handed putts, it just gets you feel quicker because you've got to use your senses. So already I've learned from this course, they're fast, but they're borrowing a lot more than what I would allowed because I would have only gone about a foot outside left. So now I've learned, God, these might be loads more break. So I'd have to, when I go on this course today, I would learn 
they're going to break more than the last course I played. So when your friends aren't giving you gimmies, where's your comfort zone? Where, when do they start to say no? What distance? Do you have like a rule? Some people, that! <laughs> you need new friends. No, we, we go that there. That is harsh. We go there. If we were coming up here and we were practicing today, I would have made the fairway, we would have got more technical and made it much tighter targets, and I'd make this maybe you're practicing from five feet. But because you need confidence, we're going to practice these two and a half footers, and you're trying to hold them all before you go out. Okay, now this one. Just gonna have a little bit of left to right on it, this one. Good. One, two, that was nice. Okay, can't miss. Let's get out there. Par 72, what would you go driving home tonight? I'm happy with that. Uh, well, if I got 90, I'd be okay. happy with that. So that's bogey golf. If we bogey every hole, that's 90. You throw a, a few doubles in there, a few pars. So if you actually think of this in a negative way, if you said this is actually a par five, how far did, it, did you watch that? Three, 360, I think. 360. Or 350. So you could hit hybrid 200, and then you'd have 160 in, which could be seven iron short of the green, chip and putt. But I think you've got to be braver with that. For us to get single figures, you've got to be braver. Um, Feels a long way off right now. <laughs> Hopefully at the end of the round, you're I might closer. hit three pitching wedges and get there. Stay. I knew that was going to happen. Stay. Okay. That's... There's a chance we'll find it. There's a chance. So what would go through your mind now? Going home. Okay. <laughs> get in the buggy and go. I'm going home. When you're getting the, you're getting the real me on the golf course. <laughs> Beautiful strike, it's fine there. Re really happy to see him on the golf course, to actually see how he handles different situations. In terms of what I prepared to cover today, it's mainly short game, look at his strategy and see how he performs differently from being in a simulator working on golf swing to actually trying to score on the course. And I learned a lot actually, so it was really useful for me to see his tendencies. Lovely. It's a save. Okay. It's a save! It's a, it's a point, it's a statement point. Okay, what are you thinking here? This kind of does suit the draw that you've been hitting. Yeah, I'll, I'll take the driver. Uh... Same thing, now you've got to choose the line you're going. I mean, for the first few holes we played today, I felt a lot of tension in my body. Day. And we talked about it, and I think that increases my swing speed quite a lot. And as soon as I start doing that, my ball striking quality drops massively. Bloody hell. Fiery with the chip outs, aggressive. Oh, yay, yeah, yay. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been brilliant. <laughs> uh, big thing I've learned so far is confidence. Now you're out in the real, playing on the real course confidence to deal with all the different shots and then he's got this left miss that's starting to get worse and worse which actually doesn't normally have uh, every time I've seen him indoors we've been working on something to do with how he moves his upper body stopping getting ahead of the golf ball so the little technical thing um, but then also just trying to get him more confident in what shot he's going to hit at the moment I can see he's still I'm in an R in and his confidence is a little bit low. I've spoken to Gary about having too many thoughts in my head you know, I got into quite a bad place in my golf in the last couple of weeks after we're, what, three or four lessons in. And I feel like there's just too crowded in there. So today we focused on shoulder turn and into out. And then my two swing thoughts as we went through a few, few holes, um, where I know if I focus on those two things, there's a pretty good chance of success. Some technical things that changed was uh, the swing we're working on with his left shoulder, trying to turn more behind the ball. He did a good job at that. It was actually coming more out to in, cutting across the ball on the golf course. So we had to jump in and add, a, add something to do with his club path that we've tweaked with indoors as a new change. It's a beautiful strike. And his short game he was making out was a lot worse than it was. After a few tweaks, telling him how to adjust his setup to the lie, his short game was one of the best parts of his game. Nice, Caddy. 
been demoted to caddy. <laughs> well done. It's good up and down that. It's that immeasurable thing is confidence. You, you can't, you know, see it inside. They know deep down how confident they are on something. So I think it's huge because you can give them the technical things that they need to do and you say, hey, move the club like that. But if you are nervous as hell inside and you've got no confidence and fear over the golf shot, your technique could be great. But if you're pulling out the shot because you're so worried about it, the outcome is going to be poor. I think the value of being on course is, is tenfold. When you get on a golf course and you're on the tee and you've only got one crack at this and you've got trees to the left and trees to the right, when you're standing in a simulator, there's no pressure. When you're standing on a tee with, at an actual golf club, there's so much that can go wrong. And, it, and it's just a different mental challenge, I think, for me that I find. I think confidence is huge. The way I do it is you add the, the technical things. We've worked on this technique to make him hit the golf ball better and then he needs to trust it. And the trust stage is how you build confidence. So technique training we've done indoors, he can do it on the range. Trusting it is going out on the course. He might only do three holes, six holes, nine holes, but that's where he's trying to perform it and then build the confidence so then he can take those shots on the course and play in pro-ams and perform well. Brilliant shot. Top dive. Well, we all know that I set out this challenge of single figures, and that feels like a long way away right now. You know, we talked about little targets, so breaking 90. Oh, there you go. Is uh, on, on the new course that I joined, is the first target, which I haven't come close to doing yet. So I would, I would be reasonably confident that if I managed to take what we've done well today into tomorrow, that I could do that. And I think that then I would feel like I'm I'm making progress. <laughs> yes, David. Yes.